In this video, we're going to discuss how Mass Effect 3 gave me Stockholm Syndrome. We'll be chatting about the best parts of the game, the worst parts of the game, and how I feel about the ending. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone? Big Dan here. I'm currently offering limited edition merch that you can pick up at bonfire.com slash store slash Big Dan. There are two different designs, I Should Go and Space Waifu. You can get a t-shirt, hoodies, sweatshirt, or women's tee and customize from several different color options. This is a limited edition run and the sale ends on Labor Day, September 6th. So get it before it's gone by going to bonfire.com slash store slash Big Dan or clicking on the link in the description. Without further ado, let's dive right in. In 1973, a Swedish man named Jan Erik Olsen walked into a bank in Stockholm and took four people prisoner. The standoff between Olsen and the authorities lasted from August 23rd to the 28th. In the aftermath of the robbery, none of the hostages were willing to testify against Olsen, claiming he had treated them well during the standoff. In fact, some of them even raised money for Olsen's legal defense. This puzzling behavior of an apparent bond between hostages and captors came to be known as Stockholm Syndrome. And this syndrome aptly describes how I feel about Mass Effect 3. Now, Bioware didn't take me hostage in a bank robbery, but the Mass Effect games did kind of take me hostage emotionally. I tend to get emotionally invested in good stories, particularly video games, where the player can to some extent participate in creating the story. And no video game franchise has gripped my imagination more than the Mass Effect trilogy. Out of all three games in the trilogy, Mass Effect 3 is the one that captivated me the most. There are a few reasons for this. After multiple games of build-up, the Reapers finally arrive, setting up the high-stakes story that unfolds throughout the course of Mass Effect 3. We reconnect with many characters that we've grown to love over the course of multiple games and watch their plot arts come to an end. Some of the most memorable character moments of the entire franchise happen in Mass Effect 3. Shooting bottles with Garrus, getting drunk with Tally, saying goodbye to Thane, curing the genophage with Morden, does this unit have a soul? At times, the writing is downright phenomenal, truly some of the best work that Bioware has ever done in any of its games. This is not to say Mass Effect 3 is without flaws, though. The game is quite an uneven experience at times. There are plenty of moments that fall flat, like the Rachni Queen getting cloned back to life if you killed her in Mass Effect 1, the fact that you can't recruit any original Mass Effect 2 characters onto your squad, the big nothing over the collector base decision, and several other parts that feel undercooked. It's also a bummer that some of the RPG elements got rolled back, like the removal of neutral dialogue options. But even with these flaws, I still absolutely love Mass Effect 3 for about 95% of the game, until we reach the finale. You see, I have been trying and trying to get myself to like the ending to Mass Effect 3. I think this is where the whole Stockholm Syndrome comes into play. Despite really not vibing with the whole destroy, control, and synthesis thing, I really, really tried to defend it, like those hostages raising money for the Swedish bank robber's legal defense. I've made videos trying to break down why the endings can work if you really sit and think about them. Ignore what you're seeing on the screen, it's better than you think it is. It's like I was trying to convince myself that I could appreciate and maybe even enjoy these endings. Except that it never really worked. This is one of the reasons I now save the Citadel DLC party to play after I've completed Priority Earth. Even though it doesn't make sense chronologically in the story, and even though I basically have to go back to an earlier save anyway, I just don't want my playthroughs to end on the sour yellow note that is Mass Effect 3's stock ending, extended cut included. So why is the ending so dissatisfying after all? I think a big part of it comes down to the tone. Think about the endings of the first two games. In Mass Effect 1, you defeat Saren, blow up Sovereign, then climb out of some rubble while triumphant music plays. <laughs> Mass Effect 2, you defy the odds by going through the Omega-4 relay, wiping out the collector base, and most likely bringing everyone out alive, especially if you follow my guide on how to save everyone at the end of Mass Effect 2. 
Then you stroll through the ship while your squad mates look at you like, you crazy son of a bitch, you actually did it. And triumphant music plays. But in Mass Effect 3, you choose what to do with the Crucible, then watch the Mass Relay Network get wiped out, the Normandy crash land on some uncharted world, and your main character most likely ends up dead. Oh, and if you choose the Destroy ending, you also killed Edie and all the Geth. It's a major bummer, even in the ending where Shepard survives. I get that Bioware wanted to turn Shepard into this tragic hero, martyr kind of figure, but that's not the ending I wanted to experience. And I think most Mass Effect players didn't want this either. It is Bioware's story, so they can do whatever they want with it, but I don't have to like it. So at the end of the day, I'm done trying to force myself to like the ending to this game. I still like Mass Effect 3, and I enjoy it for all of the good moments, and I'll still play the final mission whenever I'm doing a playthrough of the trilogy, but I've made peace with the fact that this ending is just not for me. So there you have it, how Mass Effect 3 gave me Stockholm Syndrome. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos, and head over to bonfire.com slash store slash Big Dan, or click on the link in the description to buy the limited edition merch. The sale ends September 6th. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.